What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We're going to be talking about the Black Phone 2. We'll be talking about Scream 7. We'll be talking about The Strangers Chapter 1. And we'll talk about the upcoming Thanksgiving sequel that's apparently in the works. Starting off here with the Black Phone 2. Most of what I'm reading is going to be coming from Bloody Disgusting. But the Black Phone 2 we know is coming in June of 2025. And now we have some cast and writer news courtesy of Deadline. Ethan Hawke will be returning as the Grabber. Uh, Mason Thames, Madeline McGraw, Jeremy Davies, and Miguel Mora are also set to return for the Black Phone 2. Deadline reports Universal and Blumhouse will release this sequel in theaters on June 27th, 2025. Now, I'm not going to say it's a sequel. It says the Black Phone 2. We don't know if it's a sequel or not. Deadline also confirms that Scott Derrickson and C. Robert Cargo will be writing and producing the upcoming, well, I take that back, the upcoming sequel. The first movie was based on Joel Hill's short story. Now, granted, keep this in mind, it's being assumed that this is a sequel, but the fact that it's being described as a sequel here doesn't necessarily mean that's what we're going to get. I will though say this. I think they are going to just d dive into a full fledged sequel that embraces the supernatural elements we saw on display in that first movie and Blumhouse will try to turn the grabber into their own version of a modern day Freddy Krueger since they failed to acquire the rights to Nightmare on Elm Street. And that's not me trying to throw shade at Blumhouse. I'm just saying I can see them trying to do that with the grabber, trying to make the grabber a modern Freddy Krueger. That's just me and what I can see them trying to do. I don't know what other directions you would go, especially when you're bringing back these kids who are growing. So you can't really do a I mean, you can, but it's not going to be as convincing. You can't do a prequel. Tell me that these same people are younger. And I see that they evidently have gotten. It's quite apparent that they've gotten taller. Maybe the voices sound different. They're clearly aging. I don't think that they're going to try to do a prequel. I want to think they are going to do a sequel and just fully embrace the supernatural elements. The grabber will be some type of supernatural entity that's still killing people from beyond the grave. And it'll go from there. I don't know how it really will come off narrative wise, but we'll see how the black phone two ends up being. Cause I know a lot of people still don't even think this should be happening, but whatever. So scream seven scream seven, we know fire miss Melissa Barrera, but according to the Hollywood reporter that happened a month ago. So that isn't too surprising at all, considering how Barrera herself, again, like I mentioned in my other longer video directly dedicated to Scream 7, Barrera seemed quite unfazed by the news and kept on minding her business and didn't even treat it like a big deal. She kept on standing her ground, speaking on what she wanted to speak on. Uh, Jenna Ortega, though, was apparently asking for a salary increase in the seven figures territory and expected Spyglass to be hesitant about the pay increase demands. So there was a pay issue on top of the scheduling conflicts as well. Then you had Gary Barber, a co-founder of Spyglass, allegedly believing he doesn't need Jenna, just like how he does not need Nev. I do want to highlight this, though. Gary Barber is not who said that. This was the apparent insider who was talking to the Hollywood Reporter who made those comments. So as triggering as these bits of news can be for diehards like ourselves to know that the ip is in the hands of someone who doesn't seem to respect the creative process it's important to remember that the film is again slated to come out in 2025 and that most of the general public does not care that deeply about gary's thoughts on anything nor are they hyper fixated on this situation with the cast if you want spyglass to take your frustration seriously just don't pay to watch scream 7 when it drops in 2025 the problem is most people are not frustrated by hollywood producers because they don't care about them like that they want to see if something appeals to them and if it does they'll call up a friend call up a significant other call up a loved one and say hey you want to go check out this movie it looks cool you do okay let's go they're not looking up what producer's problematic what actor has been fired or mistreated the way some of us do within the film space on social media and of course they exist outside of social media but we don't make up the majority most of the people who go out to the theaters are general people uh gary's greedy self he knows this so while these reports again can be infuriating just keep that in mind so the strangers chapter one is slated for now to be released on February 2nd of 2024. Now the database that this comes from does have it marked as subject to change. However, here's another bit of info. The film apparently has a runtime of one hour and 30 minutes as of now, but I'll say that is a rough runtime for now. 
We know that Rennie Harlan directed this trilogy of new films with Madeline Pesh leading them and the sequels will center on the fallout of what goes down in the first entry from what he has talked about in the past. A clip of the film released a few weeks ago and it does look good enough to me and in the past, we've heard that this is set in the same universe as the last two movies. Granted, we'll have to wait and see the movies ourselves to actually have that confirmed. However, will this film provide answers to questions most would rather have left as a mystery as it pertains to the past two movies? Are these new strangers connected to the folks we meet over we met over a decade ago at this point? I guess we'll just have to find out when it releases, which will be very soon, if it again indeed sticks to the February 2nd, 2024 release date that I was privy to gain access to. The runtime is more than reasonable, and it's the standard I'd expect for this type of horror film. No need to be over two hours or anything like that. But I am still a little bit concerned about how they tackle these answers to these questions that have people thinking you don't even understand what The Strangers is all about. But we'll see how this plays out for them when it drops uh, in 2024 again it's slated to apparently have a release date of february 2nd 2024 and the runtime apparently is an hour and 30 minutes but again i will say all of that is subject to change so diving into the last topic here we're going to talk about thanksgiving 2 so eli roth according to the hollywood reporter eli roth is returning to the thanksgiving table the, so as i've been seeing a lot of you point out and i'll say it too it appears there were indeed leftovers after all the filmmaker is developing a sequel to his hit horror feature which bowed earlier this month and has grossed more than 30 million globally it stands as ross best reviewed movie as a director sony's tristar sony's tristar plans on releasing the sequel in 2025 Honestly, John Carver, like I said, has potential to be the next horror icon, but this again is a Spyglass movie. So again, for everyone who does not want Spyglass to succeed, you should not be showing up to watch Thanksgiving too. However, I will also recognize this about my own channel. My own channel does not appeal to most of the people who are going to go out of their way to watch these movies. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. Most people are not looking at stuff like this. They're just not. <laughs> the numbers that my channel gets and the numbers that several other channels get that are bigger than me, you don't make up for most of the millions and millions of people who are going to have these movies advertised to them. They don't care. They're literally trying to escape reality. And if it appeals to them, they will be there. Spyglass's downfall, I really think it should happen. But the problem is it likely is not going to happen because of the fact that a lot of people, they do not check on this stuff the way that a lot of us do. They just don't, they don't care. It's not that big of a deal to them because they're not trying to go look at a movie to get in bed with anyone on a personal level. They just wanna be entertained and then dip. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications and you miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.